All right, now let's do the second half of the homework, or second half, the second third, the second part of the homework, which is the paired samples t-test. Paired samples t-test is in many ways similar to the independent samples t-test, but the way you go about it has to be a bit differently, and the way you set up the data, etc. Now, uh, here we go. We got done with our independent samples t-test. There's a beautiful graph. So I'm going to use the same data set, but in this case, there's um, there are two survey response questions uh, and, and it was actually the same survey given in two different ways so participants were sure was shown a, a little text description of a sexual offense and a non-sexual offense in a in a row and there was random variation so half of them saw one first and half of them saw the other one first but then they were asked after each one you know how much uh, treatment does this, should this person receive the sex offender? How much should they receive treatment? So there was this treatment um, attitude scale. It's abbreviated as TRT in the data set. And so it was administered under two different conditions. Now, now this is a perfect situation for a paired samples t-test. So let me get to looking at JASP here. And let's just look at what's going on. The independent samples t-test, we're done with that. I'm going to collapse that. I'm going to look at descriptives again and look at the, at the, the variables that I'm interested in. Uh, it's a new descriptives um, little window thing that we're doing here. So I'm going to look at just these two variables. You don't need a grouping variable with this because with a paired samples t-test, you're comparing people measured once to people measured again on more or less the same variable. Like the scaling has to be the same. It has to have the same potential negative and, or sorry, minimum and maximum. Basically, it has to be the same scale measured twice under only very slightly different circumstances. That's the best, best way to think about it. And this was, this was exactly the same scale measured in two different, or administered in two different ways. The treat, all the same questions, how much treatment should this person receive? It's just that one time the person you're talking about was a sex offender, and the other time the person was a non-sex offender. They committed a violent offense, not a sexual offense. So, of course, it could be sexually violent, but they, in this study, I separated the two. So, uh, if we look here, we've got trt.so, trt.nso. So, I can look at those two things, and I can get descriptive statistics for them. We're not looking at the independent samples t-test. That was previous. We're looking at this. We don't have two different groups. Here, here are descriptive statistics. You could go from one to four. So, I can copy and paste this business here. Now I'm going to go back to our document. I'm just going to paste this stuff here, this table. Now my research question is going to be a one-tailed hypothesis test. I'm going to say um, is a treatment or uh, our treatment, I can spell that, attitudes towards sex offenders lower than toward non-sex offenders. I describe my variables. I can say like trt.so um, is the treatment attitudes scale, administered, blah, 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 and then trt.nso, the same thing, just administered in response to a sex offense. Um, I, I would actually type that all out. If you do this business with the dot, dot, dots, you're going to lose some points. So I'm just, in the interest of speed, I'm just 
I would basically be copying and pasting from the uh, from the code book here provide basic descriptive statistics yep I got some descriptive statistics and as you saw in the last analysis I would go through and change these I would say treatment attitude sex offenders treatment attitudes non sex offenders something like that whatever my specific term that I'm using is I definitely would not include descriptive statistics as the title because we know that's the title you could probably leave all this stuff in here I'd probably you know go through and make sure that the stuff that is not whole numbers that you don't carry it out to three decimal places because there really is no need two will be absolutely fine so matching conceptual variables um, now this is interesting there there are two conceptual variables but they're not both well, conceptually now the variables don't quite match what's in the data set and that's what happens with repeated measures and so you could say and so there are two conceptual variables treatment attitudes were measured or I could say operationalized were measured with the with um, trt.so and trt.nso in the data set the grouping um, the groups uh, how do I say this were responses to sex offense and responses to non-sex offense and are shown by the two variables Now, maybe I should clarify here. It's not groups of people, groups of observations. The two groups of observations were responses to sex offense. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, because conceptually, there's a grouping variable and then there's a measured variable. But the grouping variable isn't grouping people or cases, it's just grouping observations for one group of people or cases. The grouping isn't splitting cases into like it is for independent samples t-test or uh, regular non-repeated measures ANOVA which we'll do later it's saying the same group gets measured twice so I so I end up with two groups of observations and so I end up with two variables in my data set because of the way we organize data so there's no grouping variable I skip that business state my hypotheses I oops I'm gonna go up and copy paste some stuff from the previous analysis now, what I believe is that the treatment attitudes towards sex offenders will be lower because this scale, if you get a lower number, it means that you recommended that, that you believe the person should receive less treatment. You're less sure that they should receive treatment. Um, so I'm going to say... And since it's about the non-sex offenders, I'm going to put NSO and SO, because that's what's used in the data set. So I'm going to do this again, minus. And you have to think carefully about this, especially for a one-tailed test. It's going to be the same. Oops, except that I can't type. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Do it the hard way. Minus mu. So non-sex offenders minus sex offenders. Now, if we think that sex offenders will have lower, we could do this any way you want. You just have to. You can do one is lower, the other one's higher. One is higher, the other one's lower. Like you can put non-sex offender first, sex offender second. But you just have to be consistent with whatever you choose. So I kind of like having a positive t value being what I'm aiming for if my alternative hypothesis turns out to be supported. So here I'm going to say non-sex offender minus sex offender. If we think non-sex offenders will have a higher treatment rating and sex offenders lower, okay, the null hypothesis is always zero. Um, there's no difference between them. But here I think non-sex offenders will have a higher treatment attitude rating. 
their treatment attitude score on average than sex offenders. So this is a one-tailed test and we're going to be looking for a T observed that's on the right side of the distribution as long as we set this up for sex offenders, for non-sex offenders minus sex offenders, that that's T observed. It's non now if we did it by hand we can make sure we set it up that way. Computers, sometimes you have the choice, sometimes you don't. Now I'm gonna say um, what is the population? It's not like there's a population of people that's different from the other population of people. It's the population is the population of potential responses. So I can say I could fudge and just use really general terms and not say population here. I can say treatment response well mean mean treatment response of non-sex oh, response toward non-sex offenses I could say offenders but it's offenses really but it's offenders okay I'm just gonna choose this one um, is equal to mean treatment response toward non-sex offenders it, you really have to think about this stuff sometimes to get the wording to match what you're doing now I'm going to do the copy paste thing because it's not equal now. Now it's greater than because I have non-sex. I put it in the same order as up here. And I didn't do minus here, but wording wise, we wouldn't say that. That's kind of weird. Mean treatment response toward non-sex offenses is greater than mean treatment response toward, oh, that's supposed to be sex offenders in both cases. Okay, I think and I have offenses and offenders. Wait, which one is it? I need to be consistent. Up here it says offenses, there it says offenders. I think I'm going to go with offenses. It's important to keep these things clear. Now, uh, maybe for some reason I now believe that it would be really irresponsible of me to claim that I found this difference if I didn't truly find it. A false positive would be really bad. So I'm going to choose alpha equals 0 0.01 and my rationale might be um, public opinion about this issue could issue especially I can spell when applied to treatment professionals could be damaging to the profession and vulnerable people and I'm thinking of sex offenders potentially non-sex offenders always a vulnerable population incarcerated people um, and people therefore to minimize the possibility of uh, a false positive result and we'll never know if we have a false positive result all we know is that we made it less likely by choosing this results I will choose alpha an alpha level of 0.01 okay that makes it harder to find a result therefore less likely that you'll find a, a false positive now diagram let's look at the diagram here it's going to be really similar to hey you're doing that thing again here okay so there's our diagram our t diagram mu zero is still zero so let's just do the same thing we did before mu zero equals zero now t critical i believe you're supposed to take the smaller of the two n's. So you look at the n for each group. I think they're going to be, oh no, they're not exactly the same. 590 and 577. Well, it's just freaking huge. 577, fine, it's gigantic. You're going to just end up looking at like. Like the T for, let's look at there the textbook 
I mean 500. There we go. So 0 0.01 one tailed, 0 0.01 one tailed for 500, 2.33, which is I think exactly what it would be, at least to two decimal places, if you just did a Z test. That's what happens with a big sample size. T and Z become essentially the same. So 2.33. Now, um, I'm going to say this is the sampling distribution of... the non-sex offender means so sampling distribution of differences between means and all the differences are in this pattern so that I can recognize the result that makes sense right and so I only have one T critical and so that T critical is 2.33 and if my hypothesis is accurate my alternative hypothesis is that non-sex offenders will have higher treatment ratings than sex offenders so this will be bigger than this so it'll be a positive number that means it's on to the it's to the right here the right of the zero the right of the middle the null hypothesis says the the average difference between sample means is zero and I say no it's greater as long as all the sample means are non-sex offender sample mean minus sex offender sample mean so I put this here that's T critical I'm gonna label it up there and down here on the T scores it's 2.33 so that's the number to beat we want to be to the right of that if we're anywhere to the left of it including some crazy big negative number crazy big negative number means we were wrong like in really bad ways it means not only was the non-sex offender mean not enough bigger than the sex offender mean. We got it backwards. The sex offender mean is actually bigger. So that's terrible. So we only have one rejection region over here. So this is, you know, you don't have to put this on your diagram, but, you know, this line, T critical, that's the rejection region right there. That everything. So we've got that going on. Now let's hit back, head back to the document here and see what it says we're supposed to do next. Uh, we've got the, oh, we forgot to put alpha. Um, alpha is 0.01. So it is on there. Let's go back here. And I'm going to do, uh, uh, I'm going to do this shading and little dots hit. Remind myself that goes over here. So alpha equals 0.01 alpha is the red shaded area and so that's that's one percent of the entire curve is here on the right you don't have to get it right just get it so that it looks like it's on the right side of the mean leave some space in case your sample mean is in there leave some space over here in case it's over there um, this is a diagram not an actually a graph so it doesn't have to be truly numerically accurate so let's go back here look at our document again um, you got the diagram and now let's scroll down a bit oh time for T observed all right I mean I just did this analysis but I messed it up and didn't show you the analysis so let's go back here and show you the analysis in JASP so here's the analysis that we do in JASP um, you want know paired samples t-test and like here we've got treatment SO, treatment NSO. It's a paired thing. Oh, but look what happened. We get a negative T, even though we should not have had a negative T, because look at the descriptive statistics. Um, SO is lower, 2.8 something, and this is 2.9 something. SO is lower than NSO. So it's the way we predicted it, but we set things up so we should get a positive T if things go in the direction of our predictions. They did go in that direction. NSO was higher than SO, so people had higher treatment recommendations for sex offenders than they did for non sex or for non sex offenders than they did for sex offenders. But I mean, can we just remember that and flip it and report a positive T even though it's negative? Or we can go back and JASP lets you do this nice thing. So you can do the NSO first and then the SO and oh lo and behold now it's positive. 
yay, p is less than 0 0.001. And let's go back and, in case you didn't see this, although I think you did. Let me, let me control Z all this crap. So p is less than 0.001. It's a very small p, so we know that it is a tiny, tiny bit of the tail, which means it has to be further out from the mean than alpha. Alpha is 0.01, p is smaller than that, so we know that t observed is going to be over here. I mean, just numbers wise, it was 4 point something, 4.65. And so p is the area to the right of that. It's really tiny. So p is less than 0 0.001. So p is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis, right? There we go. Now let's get back in here. You probably already saw that. Let's get back to our document. What is, if you got, we calculated the T observed using JASP. I'm gonna go copy that from JASP. Um, actually, let's go back to JASP altogether because there's some things you should see here. I mean, while we're here, let's just do everything. You need location parameter confidence interval. That's gonna give us a confidence interval for the difference between the means. Mean difference is 0 0.068. That confidence interval is, is looking like that. So I'm gonna copy this thing and I'm gonna go put it in my document. Um, and it's okay, you can just put it all here. I'm gonna make it look pretty later. And I'm not doing that right now because this is a bit ugly. And you know, it's, it's just so much junk we don't need on here. You need you need it to look nice and kind of professional rather than copy and paste it from stats programs. On the diagram, add the T observed and the area P. We did that already. State your decision regarding the null hypothesis. P is less than alpha, so reject the null hypothesis. And report a confidence interval. Okay, it's there. Um, Let's see, uh, knee, a sample, in for NSO, how am I gonna say that? Non-sex offenders was 0 0.06, eight points lower, it's just points, it's a survey you add them up, it's a bit abstract, was 0 0.068 points lower than treatment attitudes mean for sex offenders. Oh no, wait, it was higher. Non-sex offenders was higher. Offenders. Um, 95% confidence interval. This is not the only way to report this. 0 0.04, 0 0.10. I rounded that to do decimal places, and I should do this to 0.07. There we go, and I should go back up there and do that in that table later. Uh, conclusion. So, Here we go, let's reuse this. Sample treatment attitudes for, now, I'm not gonna say sample anymore, I'm gonna say treatment attitudes mean for non-sex offenders was statist statistically, statistically significant means we did, a, we did a hypothesis test and P was less than alpha. That's what this phrase means, statistically significantly. Higher than treatment attitudes mean, um, I should remember that this is English and I can use articles. The treatment attitudes mean was then, and then here, P is less than 0 0.01. Now I don't say exactly here what P was, because that's, there are reasons not to. You just say it was less than alpha. Uh, we did this statistic in the relationship. Oh, we need the statistic. Did I forget that in the 
Okay, yeah, I did. T. Um, it was 534 degrees of freedom equals 4.65. 534 equals 4.65. This is what you should do. I need to go back and do this for the independent samples T test too. If I'm being fancy, I can put that in italics. So T degrees of freedom are 534. They got that from a test there. Easy peasy. And P is less than 0 0.01. This is a standard report of the results of a hypothesis test. You state that one group was or was not higher than the other group on the dependent variable, and then you say what the T value was with degrees of freedom, and P is either less than or greater than your alpha level. And we got that. And a conceptual statement of the results, I think we kind of did that. Um, you can rephrase it if you want. Now, graph of the results, that's going to be really similar to graphing the results of the independent samples t-test. So let's get back over here. See how it says descriptive plots? There you go. Scroll down, it's making it for me. Come on, people. Let's scroll, let's scroll. There we go. Treat SO, NSO, SO. Non-sex offender treatment mean, sex offender treatment mean. You can see that they're different. And most importantly, you can see that the confidence interval for this does not include this mean, and the confidence interval for this does not include this mean. That means in almost every single case that I can think of that there will be a statistically significant difference between the sample means when you test them. So I'm going to copy this thing, put it in our document. and make it not insanely big. I mean, if it is big, that's fine. It's just why. Oh, that, I was trying to make it resized, not moved around. That's pretty good. And once again, I want this. Um, there's always some way that you can turn off wrapping or put it in line or whatever. In line is nice. It's kind of tidy. Um, attach or copy paste relevant output from JASP. I would go through and, sorry, copy paste a bunch of JASP stuff in there. And then I'll just dump it right in there. Okay, and I think that's done. There's some more details to be done. Make sure you dot all your I's and cross all your T's, but that's it. That's basically how you do that.